We're on our way, but the roof bottles are whistling, so we've decided to stop. And this is how far we've come. There's the yard. They're whistling that much, we thought, sod that. So we're taking them off, putting them in the boot. No idea who sent it. Have you got them, um, the Tim Tams? But we've just demolished the first bucket and they're really good. So hopefully he's round this bend. There he is. Oh. <laughs> He's there, but we were there, it's camouflage. Oh well, no line, it's fell off it, the minion is still on. Woody and what's the name is still on? Looks like he stopped quick, the minion's fell back. Just fitting the roof bars now and then the side on the top. I reckon all these cars are driving past going, what they do messing with the roof right as it fell off? The lady got a soft tyre, so luckily we've got an airline on board. So we're going to blow a tyre up for her. And then we're ready for off again. Pulled over before we go over the next bridge because the water's in the car now, it's in the truck. So get some water and uh, get some biscuits. Look at that for a view though. I don't mean James's legs. Well, the girls will be getting excited that are watching. And all the men will be getting excited about the scan you with the uh, combine on. Well, that was when the battery goes flat over there. Are you eating again? I know. <laughs> <laughs> that lasted the summer wine, this, isn't it? That's army. <laughs> That's army. <laughs> Watch that seagull. driving now into the car park. A few people here in boiler suits, they look like combine fans, not moped spotters. Plenty of room there, weren't there? Yeah. Move from the calculation. Please make the turn if possible now. Ooh, big speed bump. Everyone's putting the coats on. James is regretting his shorts. It's, it's only 10 degrees here. It's been 25 nearly all the way. There's the famous signpost there. Someone stood it getting a picture.
John's just manoeuvring it out of the car park round to the signpost. I think it's the first time a combine has ever been here. We're going to unpark it over there and get some pictures. We just realised this bollard falls down, so we're going to back up and get the combine closer to the signpost. First time this has ever been done. Glad they made the stones four meters wide. Of the sign is quite low. The auger goes over the top of it. going to go get something to eat, get there any night. It's five o'clock in the morning, there's the famous signpost. We got some pictures with it last night with the combine. The combine is now parked over there, ready for the off. We saw a van parked by the combine. We ran over just to check with it, uh, what they were up to and then went arse over. Yeah. Car's ready. I think we're ready, let's go. Yeah. Big thanks to everyone that's showed up to wave us off this morning, considering it's so early. And not many people live up here. We'll leave Ian behind with the wagon. He's there. And off we go. So that's it, we've probably done the first few hundred yards now. A little bit steamed up on the window. James is gonna sort the aircon out now after we stop caught recording. So first mile, we haven't seen any cars, we haven't seen any cyclists, uh, we haven't seen any grey Fergies, we haven't seen any mopeds and it's pretty quiet, the roads. I think we'll do nearly all of this where we're not on A and B roads before anyone's even up this morning. A little bit of drizzle on the window as well. Let's put the bike on. Right, we've been going now about, about 20 minutes and we've done nine miles, or just nearly 10. So we're done 1% so far. Only passed one car, pulled over, let some cars pass us, but they were the ones that came to wave us off. An old castle over there, maybe had a bit. Another Lexi in there in the shed, is it? There we go, there's a class dealer in Wick, 40 minutes into the journey. So we've been going an hour now, we think we've done 25 miles, which is pretty good. Absolutely nothing on the roads, um, and it's still saying on the other <laughs> field. Got 
of van just come up behind us, so right by a passing place, which is handy, so we'll let them pass. But they were waving at us before when we drove past the drive. There's the sea. This route, you basically just skirt the coast for about a mile. Nice view if it wasn't so cloudy, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right, let's go again. We're two hours in now and we've done done 48 miles, we think, which is pretty decent, really. Uh, roads are so quiet. We've pulled over a few times and let people pass. Those people are just waving. Um, yeah, uh, there's some places where we've only had to indicate and people have just overtook us anyway, just we've indicated left moved over and they've just come past so no hassle there at all road's amazing look at that proper tracks are running cool all good the scenery's amazing up here now brightening up a bit as well good roads still we're now what are we 70 miles off 70 miles off Inverness 70 miles north of Inverness we're 50 miles into the journey uh, in two hours, 10 minutes, which is brilliant. That's including a quick stop as well. There's uh, some stunning looking crops up here, especially the spring barley. Definitely getting a bit better weather than we are for growing barley. miles off a um, bridge over a river that's got good signal for pulling over for BBC breakfast. We're uh, just coming up now, I don't know, where are we, about 40, 50 miles short of the next? No, uh, 35 maybe. We've got a fast track here, pulled over, pulled its lights on and a digger. Obviously must be tracking us on the app so they know where we're at. Yeah, and some walkers. Yeah. Uh, now, four young farmers who all lost close friends to suicide are taking on a rather unusual challenge to raise awareness of mental health and encourage people to talk to each other. Yes, this morning they've set off on an 875 mile drive from John O'Groats to Land's End in a combine harvester. <laughs> Yeah. Naturally. Of course. What else? <laughs> uh, with the added complication of having to avoid motorways. Uh, uh, forgive me if it's the obvious question. Why a combine harvester? Well, uh, depression and mental health is such a big issue. So we thought, well, what's the biggest vehicle we can get our hands on that we can, we can do this in? And it's obviously a big issue throughout the country. So we're going to drive throughout the country with it, which is here. Well, there it is. I was wondering if we could see it. Um, yeah, what? yeah. Uh, we just uh, we went to the road sign because we needed to find out exactly where we were. You see, 
And what does it run? Is it just standard fuel? What happens when you know when you're running short? You just go into regular service station. How does it work? Well, no. So what we've had this, the fuel kindly donated, but we're running on hydrated vegetable oil, so HVO it's called. So it's basically renewable fuel. Can you tell us about the loss that both of you have suffered and the reason that you thought it was necessary to raise awareness? Awareness, because both of you have separately encountered your own grief around suicide. Yeah, so se seven years ago, my friend David took his life, and James, who's next to me now, his his friend also did the same thing. And when we were servicing the machine one day, because he works for the manufacturer, we we got talking. We said we need to do more about this. It's just stupid. You know, people need to talk more. So we, we, we the whole thing of this is I don't know if you can see up the top there, but we've got written on the side of it answer of as a percent. So when people ask you how you are, and people normally just say, I'm fine, or yeah, I'm okay. Well, it's probably the biggest lie in the world. You know, we want people to say, you know, I'm 60%, I'm 80%. What's really nice, we've been encouraging people to put signs up as we're driving past. And we've actually seen a guy this morning with a sign up, and he's only 60%. So hope he's feeling a bit better now. He's just had a name check uh, mentioned on here. Well, and he's been open enough to say that I'm at 60%, and that's the important thing, isn't it? Um, James, just, exactly, yeah. yeah. James, coming to you, um, there was a report that investigated uh, mental health by DEFRA, the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Committee, and they found that agricultural and veterinary workers have a higher than average suicide rate. Do you think it's particularly important to make people aware of that? Definitely, yeah. It's, uh, it's something that needs addressing, and, like, I've suffered myself, to be honest, and I spoke out, and it helps. You've got to speak. So, um, yeah. And what was it that prompted? You, what was it that prompted you to speak? Was it people asking you? Was it uh, others opening up about their mental health struggles? What was the biggest factor for you that made you feel this is something I can talk about and and get help with? Just. It got too much. It just got to a stage where you, you've got to say something. It's You either keep it all wrapped up and it boils and boils and boils and boils, and that's where I can see where people go over the top and bad things happen. But I had to do something and I spoke, so I'm glad I did, to be honest. And, and what sort of response are you hoping for from, from this challenge? What are you hoping people will do as a result of it with you raising awareness of this issue uh, well i mean obviously we're, we're raising money for the mind charity and the children with cancer charity but but what we could do is is get it when people ask you how you're feeling or when you answer the phone and say are you okay just say say how you are as a percentage you know if everyone did that then we could actually start to make a real difference and that's that's the whole point of this challenge I'm sure your pals would be incredibly proud of what you're doing in their name, raising awareness, and particularly as men talking about it. Are you OK, James? You OK? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, but what, would, <laughs> what do you think they would make about being stuck behind you on an A road because there are no motorways, are there, allowed? To be fair, the cars have been coming past. We've been pulling in. Uh, there's not been that much traffic on the road as yet, so it's been quite good. But you yeah, will be moving we, we, at some points to one-lane traffic, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, but we, we, you know, we can pull over. We've got cameras all over the vehicle, so we can see when we've got traffic building up. And it, you know, it only takes a minute to pull in and let people through. We've, we've allowed plenty of time. We're only wanting to do 200 mile a day, so it doesn't matter if it takes us 14 hours a day. You know, we'll, we should be quite easy. You're doing sharing the driving. You're doing it in shifts. How's that work? Yeah, yeah. So we, we've we've got there's a team of four of us with a, with a, obviously an escort vehicle in front. So we're just just sharing the driving. So I've just done three hours now. James is probably going to do three hours. The car drivers will swap round, and then later on we'll have a bit of a rotation around the machines as well. What's going to be the the most difficult bit of the the drive? Do you think? I think what we've just done. Some of the hills and and uh, the twi twisty roads right up in the Highlands where we are now. I mean, there's no cars at the moment, but I'll just show you some of the stunning scenery. Um, oh, we thought that'd be difficult, but we, you know, we did that at 5 a.m. this morning, and, and we're fine. Yeah, we're on tracks as well. We believe that we're the first vehicle ever to have done it on tracks. Wow. That's amazing. And I mean, you will be raising awareness. It's a really important cause. But I'm guessing both of you are going to enjoy steering that around the open road. I'm just thinking of my little boys and how much that would be an absolute dream come true for them. <laughs>
now we're in his digger, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where are you from? Sarah and Sesta, and yeah, you, you've Sesta. just been fishing. Yeah, we've been Brora. So we'll Going probably see him again as we go through Cyrus Esther in a few days. <laughs> and your cousin ran it last year. Yeah, for mind as well. In, in 20 tw days. 20 days. Youngest female ever to run it. There we go. So that was for mind charity as well. <laughs> we've just set off now and there's a big cloud of talc behind us because we've talc the tracks up. Off we go over the bridge. James is in the driving seat now. Next stop, Asda, to fill the car up. Uh, we're going to top that up with petrol for when the back gets flat well. and it uh, fills up as well with a bit of breakfast. We've just had a quick pit stop at Asda uh, near Tain, I think we are. Uh, making really good progress, so we've actually sat down and had something to eat. Uh, combine is doing fine, tracks are doing fine. Can see a little bit of wear on them. Expect it, expect it. We've probably just done two years worth of road use already today. Just checking the tyre pressures on the rear wheels and the, the indicators to the wheels haven't come in the post. So I'm just marking them up with a Sharpie pen so we can check if anything moves. We just loop this roundabout so we can let some cars through. I don't think they were stuck behind us because we only just set off again. The class van there giving us a wave. 100%. Someone here, 100%. That'll do. Just coming along here now, and you can see some of the oil platforms there in the in the bay. I think they repaired them here. One just behind them buildings, that farm as well. I think last time when I was up here, there was loads of them just sat in there doing nothing. But there seems to be a lot less now. Not very clear to on the camera. Wheat looks very well. We've been doing well, but we've been stuck behind this Range Rover, Sunday driver, for the last few hours now. That winter ball is looking good there, isn't it? Nice farm there on the hill. Here we go. Some more kids here now with signs out. That's dedication now, standing on the top of your truck. Another stunning view. Scenery up here is amazing. If you've never been to Scotland, visit Scotland. Decided that we'd uh, keep a bit of a tally up here, so we've passed two combines and one yellow car so far. Just crossing another bridge. Um, oh, focus your stupid camera. Water looks still as anything. Just pulled off the A9 for a minute just to get some refreshments that someone's kindly uh, made for us. So we're just following this John Deere back to the yard to park. What an amazing view this yard's got. Look at that right across there. I don't even know where we are. Where are we now? What's the, what's the district? Blackout. We're just, just oh, we stopped for Black Isle for something to eat. You've just seen Atsley outside. Pemberton's milk bottle up there. That's it, come a fair way that. Yeah, the ladders are in. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, on the Black Isle, it's just fed us, waters us. We're just uh, hitting the road now. Oh, there's two cars coming. Dope. Apparently we've been on the radio all day as well. They've took the audio off BBC Breakfast and um, been playing it on the radio one. Let's go. Cars coming the other way, flash as well. Fast right back. It's an icon as well. On the combine, going from John O'Groats to Land's End, support cars behind, and uh, we're playing the Rude Sandstorm on the air horns. It's coming over now, the bridge into Inverness. Still making really good time. Quite narrow lane, so escort vehicles just holding the cars just back so they can't overtake at the same time because it's quite narrow. The we stopped and I stood about and put talcum powder on ourselves. 17.6, I think, miles an hour average. That's not bad because I reckon we've been parked up for an hour and 40. Wouldn't want to do it on that tra tractor, would you? 
pulled in a lay-by here now to let some cars past. It's mostly dual carriageway, but this is just a bit of single track. So we thought we'd hang back. There's a yellow car. Get on the tally chart. So look at them views. Stunning. Lovely and warm as well. Amazing, just the camera does not do it justice what you can see. James is just pointing out a very good thing. We're in the, on the car now, we swapped around a bit. Uh, to show you the view, but he just said, doesn't look out of place a combine on the roads with skies and weather as good as this. There's the Minion anyway hanging on. Um, and then there's Woody and Buzz Lightyear as well. So we're about 75 mile, about just over three hours away from where we're stopping tonight. So we should be there just after five, hopefully, or five, six o'clock. But I do know we've got a tailback that we've got to get through for them roadworks. We're 68 miles off Perth now. We just stopped, let a few cars pass. Check the track temperature, highest track temperature so far we've read is 69, which is about now, but it is the heat of the afternoon. We've just paused anyway, let them cool down, put a bit more talc inside them. It's not the drive that's heating up anyway, it's just I think the road temperature. But look at that. Amazing. Scot Scottish Highlands really are spectacular. Anyway, we'll hit the road and get to Perth, hopefully for about half five. Yet more stunning scenery. And then if you look behind us, the combine is looking very cool with the lights all flashing, courtesy of UTV. Quick, shameless plug. Scottish silence. James has just been beeping at a fat bird. <laughs> She'd stopped away. We're having a, having a car wee. Now let the combine go past so we can swap places as it turns to dual carriageway. What a beast, what a sky. Yeah. We just stopped now in the, I don't know what mountain range it is, but it's pretty, pretty big mountains. The Kerngorns. The Kerngorns, so you can see the mountains there. And then obviously in front of me here, looks stunning. There's Martin with his drone. This is the view off the top of election of the Kengorns, is it? James is just dusting these uh, tracks. We're just try and cut the wear down a little bit. I think we've worn a mill and a half in uh, 180 mile, which to be fair is not too bad. 180 miles, probably a good, a good season's work. 35 miles off Perth, says so we're going to get there at 17.25, but that's at road speed. We're obviously at combined speed, so time to ring up now the roadworks and tell them that we're about an hour away. Yet more amazing scenery. We're now 28 miles from Perth. Some hellish views today. Castle there. And then I think there's the combine. There's the header as well. Spuds over there. Someone's had an issue with the spud planter. Can't see from here now. Another river. So is that 724 then a tanker? Quite a few people here. Just playing leapfrog to get back in front again now. And it goes back to single carriageway. This is the support of the day. So this guy was at the end of his drive was it six o'clock this morning? Yeah. If not earlier, cardboard sign, only filling 60%. And he'd even made a cardboard thing saying, uh, good luck as well. It's a bit hard to see in the picture, uh, but yeah, well done to that guy. Look who it is. 
Drop my phone. That was Rebecca, as in um, Becca and Lizzie. She's on holiday. Rebecca Wilson up here with her mum and dad, so they were just there waving at us. Oh yeah, and I dropped my phone because it was connected to the phone charger. So we've just got half a mile to go now. We've just come through the roadworks. Didn't manage to munch any cones. There's a combine behind now. John's driving at the moment. So not long, what have we done? 8.15, so pretty decent really. That's 230 odd miles done. This is the longest day as well. Not sure if he's there already, but Crawford Farms is also coming to meet us, so we'll have a catch up with him as well. We weren't sure where we were going, but we, we're guessing it's gonna be where the people are. So that is a uh, day one complete. They've got a combine in as well, another Lexian, another one to tick off on the window. I think we can tick that off and uh, tick that off. I think that scuff in there though is just from turning in off the roundabout and then into here. He seems to still be tracking okay. Getting in the video means that you've got a quality top on and a quality hat. Class hat, look at that. Matchy matchy. Just talking the tracks up, ready for morning. Who we've bumped into? It's that guy off Country File. That guy, a big, big timer. So this is Crawford. If you don't already follow him, go and find him. Crawford Farms. He's also got a Lexian, so he's got taste. Sweet, sweet Lexians. You can't beat them. Can't beat them. And what's this puppy called? This is Betty. She's got a wee bit of paint on her snout. I thought she'd been running through the pollen. That's all gone now. Massive shout out to sellers who are putting us up for tonight and also feeding us as well and supplied beer. So uh, day two, is, day one is over, day two is tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. Another thing as well, the combine could not have been any better as well. It's outperformed how we expected. Should have stopped here and got a picture, shouldn't we? Uh. Absolutely stunning and that is why we are stood on the top of the combine.